Today we're going to be looking at this really good looking case from NZXT. This is the H7 Elite. It's the top end model of the three new cases that brought out, the H7, the H7 Flow, which has got a mesh front. This is the H7 Elite, which has got a glass front as well as RGB fans. Okay, so we're looking at the H7 case. This is the Elite case. It's one of three new cases NZXT has brought out with the H7 name. They brought out the straightforward H7, the H7 Flow, and then the Elite, which is this model. We have had a look at the other models if you want to take a look at our back catalogue. So, right. So let's have a look at it. So as you can see, this is a white case. They do have a black version available as well. The other two cases also have white and black. The black versions come with a tinted glass side. The white ones are quite clear, so you can see inside with ease. And one of the main selling points for these cases is it's pretty much toolless to a certain degree. For example, you want to get the glass off on the side. All you do is push at the back corner here and it pops out and then you just lift off can be a little bit tight to get off, but that's where it is. There is a plastic sheet protecting the glass. Like that, and there's another one on the inside as well. But otherwise, it's pretty easy to get in and out of this case, which can also be a bad thing because it's easy for someone to get inside and nick your graphics card because there's no way to screw the side on or put any locks or anything like that on it. Okay, so let's have a look at the top of the case. You've got your power button, two USB three sockets there, as well as a USB type C and a combined microphone headphone socket there. The top does come off similar as the sides, just a little recess. You just pull and the top pops off. No screw, no screws or anything like that needed. You've also got a dust filter there, which is nice to see. It's the same color as the case. We've seen cases before, which have been white and they put a black dust filter in there. And again, this can be removed with ease. So very easy to get to everything, clean it out if you need to, especially even if you've got your case completely built up. Okay, looking at the front of the case, you can see it's tempered glass on the front. There is a little sheet on there as well. There we go. And the front comes off very similar to the rest of the case. You basically just pull this recess. You do need to take the top part off though to get to that recess to be able to pull it off and you just pull it, but obviously be gentle because this is tempered glass. You don't want to break it. It can be a bit tight getting off, so just be careful with it. Obviously, once you've taken it off, you can see the three included fans on the front. They are three RGB fans. They are 140 millimeters each. There is also a 140 millimeter fan on the back of the case, which doesn't look like it's RGB. There is also airflow, and obviously not on the front because air can't go through glass, but there is a little cutout on the side to allow air to get in. I'm not sure how much air you're going to be able to get through there. Three fans worth is going to be a little pushing it a little bit, to be honest with you. And the air's got to sort of bend round a bit to get in. So it's, I have a feeling it's going to restrict the airflow a bit. There is a bit of airflow coming in from the bottom, not a lot, which does have actually have a dust filter on it as well. So it's a little tray what just slides out, which is really good. This is also basically a fine mesh so it will stop dust getting in as well right on the back of the case and the side pretty straightforward this side comes off exactly the same as the glass the top the front and so forth you just basically pull up this area and it pops off you've got a bit of room up here for airflow you can't attach any fans to it or anything like that and there's no dust filter it's just basically open aired so it gives you a little bit of room at the top of the case rising it above the motherboard so they can fit the radiators and stuff like that in there. You've got that 14 centimeter or 140 millimeter fan there as well. You've got the IO port there, which basically where you put your motherboard in and you plug all your cables. You've got seven expansion bays for graphics cards and so forth. You've got a little hole here. It's like a big slit in the side, uh, which you can attach things like GPU brackets and stuff like that. This case doesn't support vertical mount GPUs. Well, we say it doesn't. It doesn't if you buy it out of the box. You can, though, buy separately this. So this is basically a vertical mount. You take all these bays out, it slots in there, and then you can vertically mount your GPU on there and connect that up to your PCI slot. So you do have the ability to do it, but it does cost you extra. So we're not reviewing this case with this because it doesn't come with it out of the box. Otherwise, you've got a hole here where your power supply goes. 
The bottom of the case is pretty straightforward. You've got four feet, which are plastic with rubber inserts to stop it sliding. You've also got a dust filter going over where the power supply will be, which is good. And it slides out on a tray, which is brilliant because it means you don't have to turn the case upside down to get to it and clean it which is really good. You've also got the one on the front we already mentioned, which just slides out that way and you can clean it out. And you can also remove the hard drive bays, which are just on the other side of here, out of the case as well. Just like the other H7 cases, the specifications are pretty much the same with the exception of how the air gets in the front, if it's got glass on the front or not. And if it's got an RGB controller, which this one does, they all support mini ITX, micro ATX, ATX, E ATX. The class is MIDI towers. They're made out of steel, tempered glass, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you've got a max CPU clearance of 185 millimeters, max GPU length or clearance of 400 millimeters, uh, front radiator clearance of 60 millimeters, top radiator slash fan clearance of 30 millimeters. You've also got cable management room for 18 to 22 millimeters which is pretty large which means you've got lots of room for doing all your cabling the ports on the front or sort of top front are usb 3.2 gen 1 type a you've got obviously two of those and then you've got the usb 3.2 gen 1 type c on there as well and the headphone audio jack on top of that you've got room for three 120 millimeter or three 140 millimeter fans on the front three 120 millimeters on the top or two 140 on the top and on the back you've got choice of one 120 or one 140 radiator support for your water cooling on the front you can go up to 360 on the top you can also go up to 360 and on the rear if you really wanted to put a water cooler there you can go up to 140 millimeters Okay, the inside of the case is pretty much identical to all the other cases, what we've reviewed of the H7. So obviously, other than the fans and the controller. So this case has got three fans on the front, one on the back. They're all 140 millimeters. The ones on the front are RGB, or should I say addressable RGB. At the top of the case, you've got a nice large cutout, which is larger than most cases have, to put things like your water cooler cabling through or your CPU cabling for your power through. It's got plenty of room up there. You've also got a nice big cutout as well for the back of your CPU slash motherboard where you can put your mounting kits on for water coolers and air coolers without taking it out of the case, which again is really good. Further down, you've got your shroud, which is really good. There's no cutout in the shroud. As I always say, it'd be nice to have the option either or without with having sort of a something like rubber or piece of plastic what goes over that area so you can actually see inside if you have got a decent power supply you want to show off. Uh, on the shroud, it has got holes all the way across the top to let air in and out, so that's pretty good. But there is two large um, holes here and here to put your cables like your audio cable, USB headers and stuff like that through if you wish. There is also another one right in the middle just here um, where you can put your GPU cables and stuff like that through as well. And there's plenty of room, as we said, behind the fans to put a water cooler and so forth. You've got this bit what sticks out here to hide all the cabling as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for the inside of the case. Looks pretty standard otherwise, but I do like the uh, options of having the larger holes in there and plenty of room to do the cabling, which I think this case excels at. Okay, on the reverse side of the case, or the back of the motherboard side where all your cable is going to be, you've got plenty of room. You've got just over two centimetres in places for all the cabling to go through. And not only that, it's got channels to run them through. You can see all the cabling through these channels. So you've got one here, one here, one across the top here, and another one down the side here. So even if you're really, 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 really crap at doing cabling, you should be able to make it at least some sort of decently tidy there. You do have options here to add two two and a half inch drives whether they're solid state drives or laptop hard drives and you've also got a hard drive bay down the bottom here which you can insert to hard drives and inside this box you've got all your peripherals and screws and bits and bobs like that as well as a couple of caddies which you can put another couple of ssds in if you wish the hard drive bay can be removed via a fun screw just here i think it is no it's just here which for some reason is black that's one thing about this case is all the screws seem to be black. I would have thought they would have done probably some sort of white version to match in, but maybe just me. Uh, but it's an interesting thing to talk about. 
Uh, you've got your controller up here, so you can pl um, plug in your RGB devices, which most of them are all plugged in already, as well as fans and control them all through the NZXT CAM software, uh, if you wish, which uh, there's the connection, connection for it there, which is a USB 2 header, which is multicolored on the end. Come on, NZXT, we're in 2022, not 1985 anymore. You can at least boot this, color it, or whatever. You don't need multicolor cables hanging around in your case. Saying that, all the cables are black coming from the top corner here, which is a bit strange because you can just about see them in the front of the case. It would have been nice if they were white cables. Oh, look, they have got white cables in there for the RGB controller. Why couldn't they have done it for the rest of the cabling? I don't know, but there we go. But otherwise, the rest of the cables are either flat wide cables, flat back cables, rounded cables. Oh, no, not another one with a multicolored end on it. Yes, audio cable. Come on. You can get a £20 case where they manage to boot these all the way down or colour them or whatever. We don't want to have to get a marker pen out or paint or put insulation tape around it to make a case look nice. Please, when we're spending this amount of money and this case is not cheap, we shouldn't be getting little things where you're cutting corners like that. But otherwise, the cable tied in, the room you've got and so forth is absolutely brilliant. The only thing I'm going to be a little bit unsure about until we do our testing is going to be the airflow. So to test in, we tested the CPU by running Cinebench for 30 minutes and getting the average temperature of the CPU. The standard H7 got 72 degrees. When you took the front off, it dropped down to 68. The H7 Flow with the mesh front got 69. And when we took the front off, it dropped down to 67. But the Elite was really, really hot at 71 degrees Celsius. When we took the front off, though, it did drop down to 62 degrees due to the extra fans it has over the other cases. On this test, we basically did the same thing again, but this time put four 140 millimeter fans, what come with the Elite case, in all the other cases. So we got an even playing field on the amount of fans. And as you can see here, we got 68 degrees on the H7. Take the front off, it dropped down to 62. H7 flow was 63 degrees, down to 62 if you take the front off. And the Elite still really hot, 71, and drops down to 62. So as you can see, the Elite is a very hot case. So in this test, we tested GPU temperature while we're running Fermark again, average temperature over 30 minutes. And as you can see, the temperature ranges between 68 degrees down to 64, just showing that the Elite can cool down a lot better with those extra fans if it actually didn't have the glass on the front. But otherwise, the temperatures weren't that much of a difference in all reality and won't really make much difference playing any games or anything along that lines. So as you can see from those graphs, there is a huge temperature difference with having the glass front on this case and, well, taking it off basically or replacing it with the mesh front, what you can get on the H7 flows. Uh, the difference is nine degrees. That is quite a big jump, especially considering there are three fans on the front. We've also got three fans on the water cooler as well. And there's also a large fan on the back to extract heat as well. So that's a big difference. So that obviously shows that glass front, even though it looks nice, it's not actually the best for cooling. But saying that, when we say nine d degrees difference, our 12700K processor, which is a very hot processor from Intel, uh, peaks at around about 75 degrees and average out at about 71, which to be honest, in all reality, that is absolutely fine. But it just shows that having a glass front on a case is not always the best for airflow. But you know, if you've got a decent water cooler and obviously you're utilizing all these fans, you should be fine. But, as I said, if you're wanting the coolest case, as in when I say cool, I don't mean cool lugs, I mean cool as in temperature, then the mesh version is definitely the best. With the temperatures dropping when you've got the same fan configuration of roughly 9 degrees between, obviously, the glass and the mesh front. So that is a big difference. So in conclusion, don't get me wrong. It might be a little bit warmer than the other cases, but it does look the part. If you want something to stand out and look really nice, you should be fine. Yes, it's a little bit warmer. As long as you're probably not going for something like a 12900K, then you're going to be okay. But for something like a, an i5 or an i7 or even most of the Ryzen lineups, apart from probably the uh, real top-end ones, 
then you're going to be absolutely fine. So don't get put off by a lot of the uh, bad reviews you may see online about it, because in reality, it is a very good case. You can easily take it apart without any screws needed. You've got all these pretty cool features. The RGB fans actually do look pretty good. So I can't really say it's a bad case. I can't really say it's the best in the world, but it does look nice. And in reality, it does cool okay. So I would recommend this case. Did you enjoy this review of the H7 Elite? I know I did. Well, why not check out the standard H7 review we did here? So that's the standard model. Or you can click the box just down here. Yep, that one there of the H7 Flow. Otherwise, make sure you give us a thumbs up, like, comment in the comment section below. Otherwise, we'll just see you next time.